What up, gems? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, if you have not subscribed, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button and make sure that you also hit the like button and the bell notification icon so that you can receive notifications every time I drop a video just like this one. So over the past few weeks, I've been receiving just a few requests from people wanting to know how to retouch and how I retouch my photos. So what I'm going to do in these lessons is I'm going to split them up in two sections. I'm going to do frequency separation and I'm going to do dodge and burn. In this first session, I'm going to record myself just doing my frequency separation process. So how this process basically start out is you need to make sure that you open your photo. So I've got my photo open right over here. I've zoomed in. The one thing you want to do is come back to your layers as they are. So you've done you know, the sort of basic editing on a photo, which I've done on here and I've opened a basic editing photo. Now what I want to do is duplicate my layer over here. So I'm using a MacBook, so I'm going to use Command J and I want to do that twice. If you're using a um, Windows computer, you can definitely use um, Option uh, or Control J and that will definitely um, duplicate the layers. What we want to do is put the layers in the group, so Command G, and then what I want to do is name the layers. So this one here, by double clicking on it, I'm going to name it Texture. And below that, I want to say Color. And so now that I've got both of these layers over here duplicated, what I want to go is on the Texture layer, hide that layer by clicking that eye tool over there. And then I want to go to the Color layer. Once I've done that, I want to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. This is a really, really important process that you should definitely not skip at all. I think this is part of what makes your image and it is really, really is important. In this process over here, there's a window that's open for you. I'm just gonna move it so you can see it. There's a window that's open for you and that helps you, where, whichever area you click in, it basically zooms in over there. So what you want to do over here is go to the area with the most skin texture. So I'm going to look around and I'm going to say the most skin texture is over here on your forehead. This slider, I'm going to take it all the way to zero so you can see what it's like. But what you want to do is take your slider up until you basically do not see some of the um, texture in the photo. And the whole point of this is to make sure that you actually um, however much you keep on here is however much texture, you, texture you're going to have in your final photo. So all photos will be different and mine I'm going to keep it at 6.2. Never skip this step. I think play around with it quite a lot and see what comes out for you. Don't just drag it all the way to the end here because it will not make sense or just leave it at where it's defaulted. You want to just move it around so that it actually just takes away a bit of the texture um, from where you wanted it to. So then I'm going to click OK. And once I've done that, you can see the image looks a bit blurry. But I can go to my texture layer. And then once I've gone to my texture layer and made it visible, I, work, I click on image, apply image. Once I'm on here, what I want to do is make sure that uh, my color channel is on RGB and the layer I want to put it on color. Make sure that it's on subtract your blending mode and then your, op your opacity is at 100 and your scale and offset 2 and 129. And make sure your photo is not inverted. So if it is inverted, just click that out. Click OK. And then once you come to the image, you're going to see it looks a bit weird, uh, but you can definitely see some of the texture which we're dealing with over here. So then what you want to go is do is go to your blend mode and you want to go to linear light. So linear light and then you sort it. What you will notice is that if you make your layer, that you, the group layer that you've just made visible and invisible is that you've basically done nothing to your image. Your photo looks exactly the same. And that is exactly how you start frequency separation. And now that you're ready for your frequency separation, I'm just going to name this F and S for frequency separation. The first thing we want to do is start with the texture. Now, the texture is really, really important. What I want to do is remove small little things like that over there, that over there, and perhaps this over here, this, 
and then leave these here as natural imperfections that she actually has. So the first thing you want to do is go to your healing brush tool. You can press J and if you long press, it will actually go to your healing brush tool. The reason why you see this plus sign is because my caps locks is on. So you want to turn that off and now you'll be able to see the healing brush tool properly. Using the keys on your keyboard, you'll be able to, uh, the bracket keys, you'll be able to make the size smaller and bigger, um, the size of your brush smaller and bigger. I am editing using a Wacom tablet, which is really, really helpful. And I would recommend to everybody to make sure that you have um, a Wacom tablet. It's just so much easier on your hand and in so many other ways. So on your mode over here, I always have it on replace. And basically what I want to do here is zoom in just a little bit, make sure that the size of my brush is equal to the spot that I want to heal. So I'm gonna heal this brush over here. And what I want to do is press option and right next to it, sample from there and click. And what it will do is basically replace that imperfection that I want to get rid of. Again, I'm just going to keep going over here, just like that, sampling and removing, sampling and removing, sampling and removing. This is a very much delicate process. It does take a bit of time and I would suggest that you do take your time. This is one of those important moments that um, a lot of people skip when they're retouching, but this is a very important process that you want to follow when retouching. You just want to remove all the little imperfections that you want. Make sure you take your time. Don't be like me drawing lines like that. So you just want to sample and click, sample and click, sample and click. This is definitely going to take a lot of your time. And I would suggest that you grab a nice playlist and some coffee maybe, and you definitely go hard at it. And while I do that, I'm going to fast forward this so you guys do not get bored watching me retouch all of these here and removing all these parts. So now that process is done of removing some spots from the texture layer. And what I did as much as I could was actually remove the spots that I did not want. Some of the natural spots I definitely left on there because I think they look good and this is how you identify a human being. So I'm going to turn the frequency layer on and off just so you can see the difference. The before and there's the after, before and there's the after. Before after before after it's just a subtle removal and we should be good to go now that i'm happy with that part of the image i want to move to the color part of things so what i want to do from here is click on the color layer and then i want to go to the brush tool and go to the mixer brush tool now what you want to make sure is that this is turned off so initially it would be on like this and you want to make sure it's turned off and you see that and then this is turned on. This is basically to clean your brush after each stroke. And make sure that these combinations is set to custom. And then you can put this on, um, I like to put this from nine to 12, so I'm going to leave it on 12. And then the load, I'm going to put it on 75. And I'm going to leave the mix at 90. And then the flow, I'm going to put it at 100. Once I'm done with that, I want to resize my brush using the bracket keys. And basically what I want to do is go each and basically zoom out of the image and actually see the image this much now. So zoom out if you're zoomed in. And then what you want to do is basically brush and, 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 and stroke. So basically move your brush just like this. So keeping it in the highlights and also keeping it in the shadows. Uh, what I like to do is work on them independently and then go in the middle of them and actually blend together. So now what we are doing is blending the colors together. Um, before the colors are just all over the place, but now with this tool here, which is the mixer brush tool, you get to blend everything in. What you want to do is keep the shape of the person. So just like the nose here, it's going up and down and you want to keep it going up and down. You actually don't want to go side to side. That'll mess your image up and how it looks. 
So I'm going to carry on with this process here and I'm going to fast forward it so that you guys do not get bored, but you get the gist of it. Make sure that you keep to the shadows and the highlights and then you work in between them. So just like I have here, increasing and decreasing the size of your brush, work in between the highlights and the shadows and work on them independently. So let's look at the before and the after. This is the before and that's the after, before and after. I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit more and you can see this is the skin texture, what it was like before and this is the after photo. You can see that we've worked on it quite a little bit more, keeping the skin as smooth as possible but also retaining what is the texture of the skin and that is exactly what we want to do. Retain the texture of the skin but smooth it out a little bit. That's the before and that's the after. The one thing which I actually like to do is also not forget, again, areas like this over here, your ear, the subject's ear, the arms. You can definitely get even more fancy and start doing clothes, which is, you know, just takes a bit longer. But you, the, the, when you start retouching clothes, it is similar to retouching somebody's face. So this process here is pretty much simple and pretty much easy to use that anybody can, can actually do the frequency separation on their photos. Frequency separation is quite an easy process to do and I think everybody should definitely do this process to their image. So now that I've got both of them together and I'm done with the image, this is what it looked like before and this is what it looked like after. This is the before and that's the after. Before, after. And that is just on frequency separation alone. Thank you guys for watching this YouTube channel and please make sure that you subscribe and also hit the bell notification icon so that you can receive notifications every time I drop a video just like this one. Thank you for watching my frequency separation. Till the next video, peace.